Hey everybody, I'm Stroke. And I'm Ender. And today we're going to teach you about resources. Yes, resources are the number one most important thing in Ministry of War because anything you do in the game revolves around resources. Uh, before we get into teaching you about the, the uses of resources, we want to show you um, the, the inventory you have and how you can tell how much you're producing. So up here in the top left, you'll see images for all the different resources. You have food, wood, stone, metal, and gold. If you hover over each one, you'll get a lot of information about each resource, which we'll go over right now. The first one is inventory, and it, it gives you two numbers. The first one is your current amount. For, for right now, we see the amount of stone we have. The second number in inventory is the max you can hold with your current warehouse. If you upgrade warehouses or research new skills, you'll be able to hold more. Right, the next two you'll see total production and basic production. Basic production is how many of that resource you would produce per hour without any boosts. Total production is your total, the total number you produce per hour with all boosts and skills and everything like that. The next, next you'll see skill bonus, which is based on the amount of research you have performed in your research academy. So if you increase more, uh, more stone skills, you'll be able to, to produce more. Right, next is hero and props bonuses. Those aren't currently implemented in the game, but... Spoiler so alert! <laughs> soon you'll be able to do things like equip your heroes with uh, special equipments and activate certain props that'll uh, assist you in, in resource production. After that is the country or the sieve bonus resource production, which is based on the population of your sieve. The, the less population you have relative to others, the, the larger bonus you will have. Definitely. And the final one is full house time. That means from right now, how long it will take you to fill up your entire inventory. As you can see with stone, it would take me six days and seven hours to get to my maximum stone inventory. So we've got a lot of information in there. Now let's move on to one of the ways that you can use resources, maybe the main way, and that is troop recruitment. Right. So if you go to any of your troop buildings, for example, archery range, barracks, stables, and uh, later buildings like that, and you look at the list of troops that you're able to recruit, if you hover over the train button, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Got a little friend request there. <laughs> nice timing on that, Aiden. <laughs> uh, so you can see that um, the troops require all, all types of resources, and once you make them, they will require food. So they actually, you know, all five resources are used for troops. Exactly. So if you hover over each one, the more advanced uh, troops that you see, they'll all require um, a little more resources. What you see right here is the amount of resources it takes to to train one of those troops. So, if you click train troops, there's a slider here that'll show you exactly how many you're going to recruit, another recruit button, and it'll show you the total number of resources it's going to take to recruit that many. Quick thing you can do is just hit max, and based on your current level of resources, it'll tell you exactly how many you can recruit, how long it'll take, and uh, resources that it's going to consume. Another way you can use resources is for building buildings and upgrading them and constructing, and that can be a huge drain on resources as well. Exactly. So, for example, here in this, I'm currently upgrading my stable, um, which is not a good example. But if I want to upgrade, for example, a civilian house, that tells me right there exactly what I will need. Uh, another use would be for researching skills. So, for example, if you go to the Research Academy, which is down in the middle of the screen, you will uh, see the different types of researches and the amount of resources for those as well. Very similar to recruiting troops. Right, so as you can see, almost everything you do in the game requires resources. Sending your troops off, um, uh, missionizing, everything requires resources. So what happens if you have, say, like a lot of stone, but you have zero metal? Is there anything you can do in the game? Absolutely. Well, what you have to do is build yourself a market. Markets are very important. I think they're underutilized sometimes. But markets will allow you to exchange your resources. So if you have a surplus of, say, stone, and you need more lumber, you click on stone, and then lumber, and then use the slider again, and you can research it. So you'll see 59,000 stone will get you 6,000 lumber. Hit trade, and you got it. Yeah, the only other big thing about resources is that if you are really running low, you can head into the store, and you can purchase... Uh, boosts to the production or actual just straight packs of resources. Exactly. So if you, right now if you go into the production tab, see a few options, stone pack, uh, lumber pack, and metal pack. Those will instantly give you, like it says, that one gives you 50,000 metal, this one gives you 50,000 wood. Or you can do production boosts, for example, the Titan of Industry and the Graveyard Shift. They boost your resource production by 25% for 12 hours here, uh, 7 days there. And there's a few more options within there as well. And that's about it. Thanks for listening. All right.